Higher order functions in Swift are a great tool that we can use to get the same results with fewer lines of code. This is the second in the series of higher order functions, and if you haven't already watched the first on map, compact map, and flat map, I encourage you to do so, as this one builds on what we learned in that video, and I'll leave a link in the notes below. In this video, we'll focus on three more, reduce, filter, and remove all. As with all videos in this series, we'll be using a playground to help with our understanding. I'll leave a link to the episode's playground in the notes below, and I encourage you to work along with me, pausing the video or speeding it up as needed to help you with your understanding. So first, let's look at reduce. We use reduce to combine all items in a collection to create a single new value. For example, here we have an array of numbers, and I'd like to get the sum of all of the numbers in this array. If we don't use a higher order function, we can use a for in loop like this, where we initialize a sum variable with zero, and then use a for number in numbers and add the number to the sum. This is fine, but as we found with map, we can significantly reduce the number of lines of code with higher order functions. And the function for this task is reduce. We'll start the same way as we do with map. We define our constant or variable and assign the reduced value of an array. So let sum equals numbers dot reduce. If we accept the code completion, we see that we get two placeholders. So let's tap enter on both of these placeholders for our variables. Notice that whatever our end result is going to be, we need it to be the same type as the other two values. Adding all of our integers will result in an integer, so we will specify that here. And this placeholder is our starting value, and this is the same as the value we started with in our loop, zero. The first argument in the closure is what we want to accumulate, and we know that the type has to match what we will return. Ours is going to be accumulated as the sum as we step through the values in our array. So we'll call this current sum, and the second is the array element, so we'll call it number. In the body, which gets executed during each iteration, we add the current sum and the new number. Because this is a single line closure, we don't need to use the return keyword. Running this, we get our total of 21. Now, if you watch the first video in this series on map functions, you know that there are ways of reducing this code. Since the body of our closure is a single line, Swift can infer the return type, so we don't need that. And we also learned that we can use shorthand arguments. And since there are two, we can use $0 and $1 and remove our argument in portion entirely and replace current sum and number with those two shorthand arguments. So our single line of code now looks just like this. It turns out that we can even do better than this. Reduce has an even shorter version for simple cases like sums and products, where we can get rid of the shorthand argument altogether. All we need to do is have the initial value and the symbol for the operation to be performed. So in our case, it would be zero and a plus. In this next example, if we want to find the product of our array of integers, we won't start with a zero because zero times anything is zero. We'll start with one, and our symbol for multiplication is star. That was pretty easy. Before I move on to working with more complex objects, I want to return to an example that we had in the first video. Here's an array of three other arrays of various sizes, all with integer values. I want to get the sum of all of the integers in total. If you watched the last video, you know that you can use flat map to remove those inner arrays and have all of the elements in a single array. Well, now that we have a single array of integers, we can use reduce on it. So we can just chain the function to our existing one with dot reduce and use zero comma plus. And quickly, we'll get our total of 117. Consider this array of employees. 
If I want to get the total amount of salary paid out to all of the employees, we can use reduce. Let's start with the full definition first to make sure we understand. Our return result type will be a double because that's what our salary type has been defined as, and our initial value will begin at zero again. The accumulated total, as before, we can assign current total, and it too will be a double. And our second argument has to be the employee type, so let's just call it employee. Now in the body, we can perform our calculation. Our current total will be incremented by the employee.salary. Of course, we can shorten this because of the single line of code. We can use two shorthand arguments, $0 and $1, and remove the arguments and in portion. So now again, a short single line. We can't do any better than that though, because zero comma plus wouldn't know which property of employee to use to add. Working with reduce on dictionaries may seem a bit confusing at first. Consider this example here. These are the same values we used in our employee array above, except that I haven't defined the value as a double, so it will infer it as an integer. To calculate the total salary, which is the value of each key value pair, we can use reduce. Our return is an int, and our initial value is zero. We can specify a variable and call it current total for our accumulated total. The interesting part is the second argument is not a dictionary. It's a tuple, and each element of our tuple has a name the first being key and the second being value. That's pretty convenient. This means that the names are the keys and the salaries are the values. So let's replace this tuple placeholder with the variable employee tuple. Then our code can be current total plus employee tuple dot value. Running this, we get the same total as we did with our array of structs. Of course, with a single line of code, we can use the shorthand arguments. This looks very close to the same code we had in our previous example. If we'd like to reduce our dictionary to a string of names separated by spaces, we can shorthand this by reduce on the employee dict. This time, however, our initial value is going to be an empty string. So we can use our shorthand argument We'll specify $0 as our compounded string, and each iteration will add the dictionary's key plus a space. We can apply reduce to sets as well in the same way that it applies to arrays. Take a look at this set. Let's say we want to reduce the set to get the total of all weights. This is easy using shorthand. Weights.reduce with 0, comma, plus. Now let's try to get the total of all weights over 100. This is a bit more complex, so let's start with the long form. The result will be a double, and we initialize it with a 0. Let's call the accumulated value current total and the iterated value weight. In the body, if weight is greater than 10, we return the current total incremented by weight. Else, we just keep the current total and return. Can we do better than this? Well, since the closure body is longer than one line, Swift can't infer the return type. Let's see what we can do by compressing the if-then-else clause to a single line using a nil coalescer. Our check is weight greater than 100, and with the nil coalescer question mark, we'll need to return current total plus weight, and we need to surround this in brackets, else colon will just return current total. Now, now that it's one line, we should be able to remove our named arguments and use our shorthand arguments. Next up is filter.
The filter higher order function allows you to loop over a collection and return a collection of the same type, containing only those elements that match the included condition. For example, let's consider this array of integers, and we want a new array that contains only integers less than or equal to 5. We could use a for in loop like this. We'll first initialize a new array of integers as an empty array, and then loop through our numbers array and append only those integers that are less than or equal to 5. Well, we can use filter just like we do the other higher order functions. We can start with our new variable and assign the filtered array of our numbers. So let new numbers equals numbers.filter. And notice in the code completion, it will return only integers that match our criteria that we will specify. Tapping on the code completion will replace our placeholder with the variable number. And in the body, we'll specify our criteria. Written the long way, this would be, if number is less than or equal to 5, then return true, else return false. Of course, this is overly verbose. All we really need to do is return the truth of number is less than or equal to 5. And it will be true or false. And we don't even need the word return. Now that we have this down to a single line, I hope if you've been following this series, you'll be able to replace this code with a different version that uses a shorthand argument. In our second example, we can use the string prefix command to filter out only names beginning with the letter A. And by now, I hope you're comfortable with using shorthand arguments. This will miss Albert, however, since his name begins with a lowercase a. We can solve this by chaining the uppercase function to our argument before getting the prefix, and then comparing it to uppercase a. And just to show you another example of chaining, sometimes all you want is to get the first result of a filtered array. In this case, you can use the same filter as above, but append dot first to get only that first dictionary element that matches the criteria. Working with classes and structs is straightforward. Here we have an array of person objects, and I like to filter out an array of adults who in my province are anyone 19 years or older. Using filter, we can see our object is a person, so we need to compare the person.age to 19. I'll leave it up to you to reduce this code to use the shorthand argument. For example, too, we want to have two conditions. It must be older than 20, and must have a name that begins with the capital letter M. Let's just jump right into our shorthand argument version. We know that $0, our person, dot age, must be greater than 20, and $0.name dot prefix of 1 must be equal to capital letter M. No matches, so an empty array. If we go up and change our condition to look for a prefix of capital L, it finds Larry. Remember, you can chain functions together. If we want to get a list of just the names of people under the age of 19, then we can use filter to find people and use map to extract only the names. Again, if you've not watched the video on map, I suggest you do and I'll leave a link in the notes below. There are no problems working with dictionaries either. Given this dictionary, we filter to a new dictionary where the values ages are greater than or equal to 19. Notice the comparison argument is a dictionary, so we'd use the value as a comparison.
Of course, we can use shorthand arguments too. And finally, with sets, if we want to generate a set of weights where the values are less than 100, we can use filter. We see that our light weights is indeed a set of doubles, as weights is. And for the last portion of this video, we'll take a look at remove all. You use remove all to modify a collection by removing elements that match a certain condition. The one you may be familiar with is simply remove all with no parameters. Unlike the previous functions that we have looked at, this doesn't return a new array. It acts in place. So to empty out this array of numbers, we just need to type numbers.removeAll. Now, if we want to remove integers that are greater than or equal to 5, we can use this version of remove all that allows us to specify a condition that will either be true or false, just like filter. We don't need to use the long version. By now, you should be familiar with the shorthand argument $0, and we can use that to remove any integers greater than or equal to 5. And as you can see, Numbers is just now an array of integers from 1 through 4. We can use remove all on dictionaries as well. To empty out a dictionary like this, we'll just use remove all, no parameters. I do pose this question here. Can you remove only elements where the value is greater than 19 by using remove all? If we try, we see that the code completion on remove all for dictionaries doesn't provide us with that option to specify a condition. So I guess the answer is no. Well, another long video, but I hope you learned something. We'll continue on in the next video of this series to cover more higher order functions. Thanks for watching. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store and visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.